So first, R is at 1, 2. Okay, where is S? Negative 3. Negative 3, 2, 3, 4. Okay, there's S. And where is T? Negative 5, 0. Okay, so those are the three points. We've got to find a center, which is going to be called the circumcenter of those three points. So next, we just make this into a triangle. Would you please make a triangle out of those three points? this over a bit more so we can see our notes. Oh, close enough. All right. So we now need to find the perpendicular bisectors of this triangle. There's three of them, three lines, but we only need two of those lines. Because if you can find a spot where three lines cross, it's the same as finding where just two of the lines cross, right? So we need to find a perpendicular bisector for two of these lines. It doesn't matter which two. Um, let's see here. Jessica, can you help me find the first thing we need to find a perpendicular bisector, which is the midpoint? Can you help me find the midpoint of TS? Where would that be? And don't overthink it. Midpoint means halfway in the x direction, halfway in the y direction. Sorry, ma'am? Okay. And? How much to the right? One. One to the right? Okay. So right there? Nice, because all the way up would be four and all the way over would be two, correct? So just half of that should be where we need to be. So there's our first midpoint. Nailed it. Very nice. Uh, Mataria, could you give us the midpoint for SR? Where should I do to find the midpoint of SR? Uh, let's see here. From Argo, where? Up one. One, two, three, right here. Go over two. One, two, right here. Okay. And let's see if that makes sense. To get from R to S, that means go up two units and go over one, two, three, four units. So half of two is one, and half of four is two. So up one over two. Yep, sure enough. So that is our midpoint. So we've got the midpoints of both of these um, line segments. Now we need to find the slopes of the original line and then come up with a perpendicular slope. All right. So I need the slope of TS. We'll do that one first. And lowercase m here denotes slope, of course. And slope is rise over run. Ivana, what's the slope of line TS? Go ahead. Okay. Up four, okay, and over two. What do you guys think? Up four over two? Is that the slope? What are you finding? Slope of T S, as it says right here. Is it the slope you're looking for the width be half of that? We could simplify that though. Four over two simplifies as two over, two over one or just two. So that's our slope. Up two over one, up two over one. Sure enough, that's true. What we also now need is the perpendicular slope to TS. And perpendicular slopes are opposite reciprocals. So opposite means a different sign, so that makes it negative. And reciprocal means flip the fraction around, so it becomes negative 1 half. All right. So with that slope, we can now draw a line segment that passes through this point. This says go down one over two. So down one over two, down one over two. So there is my line.
right there. Can you see that's perpendicular? Can you see they have to have different signs? Otherwise, if we had a positive one half, that would not be perpendicular. It'd be running at a weird angle, not a 90 degree angle. So far, so good. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Miguel, can you help me get the slope of SR? Yep. Over x2 minus x1. I don't. I might be on the field trip. I don't know. What do you guys think? Never 2 over 4, you said? Okay, yeah. what do you guys think? down 2 over 4. Yep, that seems to be right to get from S to R. And that simplifies to negative 1 half. Interesting. So it's actually, that tells us that SR and TS actually are perpendicular to each other. What if we go from R to S? We could. Let's see what happens. If I go from R to S, that's going up to, that's a positive number, right? Backwards would be a negative direction in the X, though. So 2 over negative 4 that's the same as negative 1 over 2, right? Yeah. 2 over negative 4 is the same as negative 2 over 4. So you could go backwards. It would still give you the same slope. Great question. Excellent question. So here's our slope. We need the perpendicular slope to that, to SR. So that will be a positive 2 over 1. All right. So we now know the equation or the, the slope of the other line that we needed. So that means go up two over one, up two over one, and the same back two, uh, uh, back one down two, excuse me. And here is our line. Oh, conveniently, it seems that they're going to cross at the same point. Can you see that? And in fact, that sensor, let's see, Mr. Dillard, what's the, what's the location of that center? Can you give us the coordinates? Sir? The coordinates of the center where they're crossing? It is one, negative one, negative one. Negative one? Two, one. Negative two, one? Okay, that's okay. No, it's okay. You, had to, you caught yourself. That's good. So negative two, one. That's is, this is our center the intersection of these two perpendicular bisectors. This is the circumcenter, folks. Now here's a crazy thing. It's happening on the line of this triangle. And some of you are thinking, well, does it always happen on, on the line? No. The reason it's hitting the line itself is because this is a special type of triangle. We just said that TS and SR have perpendicular slopes, which means that this is actually a right triangle. And here's an interesting thing. Look what happens when I draw in the circle. If I draw in a circle that circumscribes all of these points, this is now an inscribed angle, is it not? Mm -hmm. yes. If that's 90, what is this arc going to be? 180, which means TR is a diameter, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now that's only true because we're dealing with a right triangle. This is from chapter what? This is from 10-6, I think, or 10-5? 10-4, uh, inscribed angles. Uh, there's a theorem about if it's a right angle, then it must be um, circumscribing a semicircle, or uh, inscribe, uh, intercepting a semicircle, excuse me. So this only happens because we're dealing with a right triangle. It's kind of like special rights. When they happen, it's nice, we can use them, but we don't always get special right triangles. Here, if you get a right triangle and you plot your three points, it's great. It makes your job pretty easy, but it does, you're not guaranteed that every three, set of three points is going to make a right triangle. So when it happens, it's nice, but it's not always going to happen. So we've got our center. What do we still need to make an equation of a circle? The we need the radius. Thank you. Now, radius will be the distance formula, I guess. 
we're going from the center out to any one of these three points, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Ataria, help me out here. How far is it from here to here? How many squares is that? Three. And how many down? One. So my distance, I'm going to put R here instead of D for radius. My radius is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared. And that is the square root of 10. So we now have our radius. Cool thing is, it didn't matter which point we went uh, to. As long as we're going from the center, any point along our circle should give us the square root of 10. So to verify that, Edgar, how far is it in the x direction from our center to s? How far in the x, x direction? One. Okay, and how far up? Three. Yeah, so it's the same numbers, isn't it? This was 3 and 1. This is 1 and 3. It's the same numbers. 1 squared plus 3 squared is going to give you the square root of 10 when you take the square root of it, right? So will all the numbers be the same, like the square root of 10? They will all equal square root of 10, yes. Now, will they all be 3 and 1? No. They won't all have that same exact triangle. These three points do. but Because it, it, maybe if I like choose this point out here, well, the distance out there is not exactly 3. It's not exactly 2. It's like 2 point something and 2 point something. But when I square them out together, definitely they're going to equal the square root of 10. Yep. Because that radius has to be the same all the way around. So we've got our radius. We can now write the formula. We can write the formula for the equation of this circle. And it looks like this. So we have x minus h, correct? What's h? What is H, folks? Three. Three? H refers to the x-coordinate of our center. What's our center? So the x-coordinate is negative 2. So you get x minus a negative 2, which is the same as x plus 2. So it's just x plus 2. For the y, we get y minus 1. And that's it. So we got those, and then we're going to square our radius. Well, our radius is a square root of 10. When we square it, it just becomes 10. The square of square of 10, uh, sorry, the square root of 10 squared is just 10. Yes, sir? So the square root of 10 and 10 are they like the same thing? This number is being squared. So we're taking this number and we're squaring it. So we're taking the square root of 10 and we're squaring it. That is our radius squared. This is the same thing as the square root of 10 times the square root of 10. That's the square root of 100. What's the square root of 100? 10. Any number, when you take the square root of it, if you multiply it times itself, gives you the number itself without the square root. These two things are inverse operations. It's like me adding something and then subtracting the same thing off. It cancels itself out. It's like multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5. They cancel each other out, correct? Squaring something and taking the square root. They cancel each other out. You're left with a positive number. Okay, so this is our answer. We're done. That's it. Now, having said that, all of the work we did was here in the in was graphically done, correct? Yes. All right, we found slopes using pictures and and we counted, but ultimately <coughs> what happens if the place where they cross is messy? It's not on a line. It's not on a particular coordinate that we can easily find. Maybe it's somewhere in this box, or in this little square right here, but we're not sure where. It's some strange decimal number then our picture can't tell us the exact location. So instead, we, we need to use our algebraic methods to find this. Let me show you the algebra. And yes, it's a, b it's a fair amount of work. However, it's not difficult work. And that's the part you have to be aware of. This is something that's definitely within your wheelhouse, shall we say. You're definitely capable of doing this. So let me compare for you these two things. 
What was the first thing we found on this triangle? The very first thing. No. A midpoint. So, right. So look at the first thing I did over here. Not the midpoint. Right. This is me saying, hey, I need to find the perpendicular bisector. First thing I found was a midpoint. Got it. The next thing I needed is the slope. Got the slope. So now I have a point. I have a slope. The line going through that point. I use that to create an equation. Notice that they're both in red. Okay, that red line, that equation. Did the same thing again. Repeated the whole same thing again. Got my other line, now in blue. Okay, so algebraically just doing what we did graphically. It's the same stuff, right? Just a lot more writing. Notice we're not terrible at this. This we're scared to death of. This algebra stuff we're scared to death of. But really, you already you can do the mathematics. Nothing up here is blowing your mind. You're like, I have no idea how that happened. Right? It's very sequential. So this is something that you can make sense of. You can ask questions about it. You can figure out if there is problems, though, because everything's here. So we have these two lines. Now what do we still need to know? What do we need to find out now that we have the two lines? What are we using them for? We're almost to the radius. We're not there yet. We need to find what first? What are we trying to find here, guys? You have your notes. What are you trying to find? The yeah. What is that intersection called? Center. And on the triangle, it's called the circumcenter. We're trying to find the circumcenter. We did that by having two lines cross. And where they cross, that's our circumcenter. Well, we need to know where these two lines are going to cross. These two equations, y equals 2x plus 5 and y equals negative 1 half x. There's two ways to find where they cross algebraically. One, you can use technology, plug these both into your calculator, and see where they intersect each other in the graph. Totally fine. So you can use a grapher. So this yellow note on the left says use a grapher to find that intersection, or if you want to do it by hand, or you have to do it by hand, then it's a system of equations problem. Here we have to find where these two things cross. Your two methods are elimination, we subtract the two equations or add them. Or substitution. We chose to go with substitution. It's not a big deal. We just set these two things equal to each other. And now we solve for x. So we multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. We got one, negative 1x one equals 4x plus 10. We then combined like terms. We got negative 5x equals 10. And we just simplify and got x equals negative 2. OK, so there's our number. We take that, we plug it into either one of these equations, and we'll find out the y value there. We found out it was 1. So my center is at negative 2, comma, 1. There it is. And notice, it's the exact same thing we had in our graph. That's fantastic when they match. If this was a weird spot, then this would tell us the exact location, and we'd go, oh, yeah, that's in the region we were expecting it to be in our graph. Okay? So that confirms for us. What do we do after we find the center? What do we still need in order to create this equation? Got to find a radius. So last step, last yellow card on the right, find radius. You use the center, and it doesn't matter which point I use. I happen to use point T. You could have used point R or point S. You can't use these midpoints because they're not actually on the circle. So just obviously we can't use those. Anything else, fair game, as long as it's on the circle. So we substitute it in, and notice we get the same radius square root of 10. So we now substitute to our equation, and here's our final equation. Just like we had on our card. It's the same exact equation we came with. All right, you'll need time to write that down, I suppose, yes?